Hi, it's Deborah Peters. Welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. It is absolutely my pleasure to have you join me today. And I've got a really incredible show for you. I'm curious how many of you struggle with being able to achieve your desired outcomes and to be able to achieve your goals and to to live the life that you would like to live rather than feeling like you're kind of stuck. You know, look, it's the beginning of January. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new month. Let's really make this that year that we make the shifts we want to make in our lives and we create the results we want to create in our lives so that we can look back on this year and say, yeah, I really stepped into my power and I really stepped into my greatness. If there's ever a time to do that, this is it. And I want to just kind of pause for a second and say hi to some people. So um, GS, thank you for joining us. And Robert and Camelia, it's nice to have you here. I would like to know what you guys would like to get out of these shows because I, can create any sort of toolbox that you're seeking and bring it into the mix of our programming over the course of the year. Robert Edward Franklin III, nice to have you. And Rick Parsons and Ted, great to see you. Enrique, John Ortiz, nice to see you. Glad you joined us today. Um, Christina, and wow, look at everybody popping on here. Maurice, um, Taylin, Tony, Karina, I love you, Carrie Ann. Wow, I am just absolutely thrilled to have you guys here today. So definitely in the chat box, if you would like me to cover off some topic that would benefit your life, Maurizio, nice to see you, and Mark, I would be more than happy to bring that into the programming this year. As you know, we're running Tuesdays and Fridays at 1230. This is like your lunch hour tune up, if you will. Whatever happened to you this morning, you just hit the reset button now and I'll do everything I can. <laughs> Taylor, thank you. I'm so sorry. Um, it was like, I was looking at that going, is that a, an L or is that an F? So I appreciate that. Hi, Lynn. Um, so yeah, I would love it if you would tell me what it is that you would like me to cover and I'll, I'll work it into the programming. So here we are. It's like the third week of January. Now, I actually began my year back in November. I felt like for me on a personal level that 2019 kicked off like right around the beginning of, um, of November. Hi, Catherine. And um, <laughs> it's Deborah. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like if you're French, it's Deborah. If you're um, English speaking, you can say Deborah, but then people kind of confuse it with D-E-B-R-A. It doesn't matter. Just don't don't call me Debbie. I hate that. Um, or Deb. I don't shorten my name. I guess that would be the way of, of, of saying it. So, yeah, at the beginning of November, I started 2019. And um, I will say that 2018 was just kind of wrought with, uh, with challenges. And as I look back on it now, um, and I knew this going through it. So I just want to share this with you because this is another really pivotal year for pretty much all of us. And um, what I experienced in 2018 was not so much challenges as it was like my higher self calling me up. You know, I have this saying when I'm working with clients, I'm not calling you out, I'm calling you up. Because we all have the infinite capacity to up level and to be a higher form of ourselves. Hi, Dave Buchanan, nice to see you. Um, 
So in that realization, it was really, a, it was like a spiritual upgrade that I was going through. And I had all of this clarity come through and all of these amazing downloads, which I started dumping into my book. And um, I'm really excited to say that a large chunk of that book is done. And um, the publisher asked for some more flushing out of chapters. So I'm, I'm doing that now and I should have that completed pretty soon. But I thought perhaps might be useful for you guys to, if I were to cover off a little bit of what I experienced, which is where I get all of my, my coaching tools, is, you know, it comes, it's not a theory for me. It's not a course I've taken, although I've taken a lot of training courses in human growth and team development and organizational development, et cetera, et cetera. But the application of all of that um, is an art form. As it is, I think, with pretty much every high performance coach, there's the science to it and then there's the art of it. And the science alone isn't enough. You have to have the art of it. Hi, John, nice to see you. Oh, you're at Legion Park, I'm so jealous. Better get an umbrella, because it's gonna rain in about half an hour. I can see the clouds rolling in. Um, and as we go through these upgrades, it might feel like we are being challenged. And I think the most important aspect or awareness of this is that there is no assertion. So nothing is happening to you. Everything is happening through you. And the relationship that you have with yourself and your ability to um, connect with your inner being, your higher self, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is going to be what eases the pathway, so to speak. So rather than look at things as being a challenge, I always look at them as being an opportunity. It's an opportunity to be a greater me. So here's kind of how that works is first of all, you realize that nothing is an assertion that everything is happening through you. And when you take the reins on that, then you can actually change your entire response to it. So all day long, I'm always asking myself, am I reacting or am I creating? Like what's going on in this situation? Somebody says something that upsets me, then I'm reacting. Somebody can say that same thing, but it doesn't push a button in me and now I'm actually creating. So what am I creating from this scenario? And that comes from having a really good, solid relationship with yourself. How do you do that when we have so much noise around us and we have the media telling us, I mean, seriously, just all you have to do is scroll through Facebook and you see all these people talking about how great their lives are, how great their body is, how great their money is, how great their relationships are. I mean, nobody's gonna come online and tell you that the shit's hitting the fan in their lives and that everything is upside down, right? Um, so they're telling you how great everything is and then that becomes like this point of comparison where we think, well, my life doesn't look like this person's life, so therefore there must be something wrong with me. And this will not happen, like you will not have that response mechanism when you have a really good, solid relationship with yourself. Because when we react to life, when we react to external events, it's because we're being triggered and we're not aware that it's even a trigger, it seems like it's real. So, you know, at some point I'm going to be doing another bending reality episode. It'll be like part three. But I thought I would just kind of um, warm you guys up a little bit because it's going to be some pretty heady material that I'm going to get in, into. And I thought some of the warm up might be to actually break down how the mind functions in us and give you a sense of what you can do with that in your own world, whether it's dealing with bosses or clients or family or a spouse or, you know, whatever, a health challenge, right? 
So let me just kind of break this down. And, and before I get into it, I wanted to share with you that I am soon launching my Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story online course, which is a nine-week class that we do on a weekly basis. And I walk you through a process of really sorting out and letting go of any and all limiting beliefs you may have around receiving more money. And we put an emphasis on mindset and patterning and neuroscience. Um, and at the same time, we also get into the actual pragmatic steps of generating and creating new revenue streams for yourself and for your business. I will have a link to that. We've got a brand new website that is launching really soon. In fact, um, we were online this morning working on it. We just have to do some tests on the server and then we should have everything ready to go. So perhaps yeah. Friday, by the time I get that um, website up and rolling, we'll have my next episode of the Deborah Peters show. And then you can jump on there and you can take a look at the class. The other course I have happening is in February, February 22nd and 23rd. And that is a live event here in Los Angeles at our corporate office. So if you're looking to scale your business, you definitely want to come to the Business Accelerator Bootcamp. So just going to pause for a second and say hello to a few people. I see Tony just jumped on and Jimmy, nice to see you. And Haim, it's so great that you would take the time out of your busy schedule and join me today. And you're certainly welcome. Hi, Clement, to um, my favorite British actor in Los Angeles. You're certainly welcome to pop in some kind of a comment of what you'd like to see covered in upcoming episodes. And it would be my absolute pleasure to develop some programming around that. So let's get into how the mind works. Okay, so I'm gonna just give this to you um, in, in sort of a, a, not elementary, but, but you know, there's only so much time I have to go through this material. So I'm gonna keep it as simple as I can in layman's terms, but if you really wanna get into a deep dive into um, more technical aspects of the neuroscience, you probably just wanna come and take one of my classes. And forgive me if you, if you hear a hammering, I think they're working on something in my building. So um, thanks John for joining us. Have a blessed afternoon. So I for, forgive me if there's, if there's hammering going on. All right, so essentially it works like this. So we have a conscious mind, which is basically, you know, it's, it's, it's the mind that decides on new things. Like it sees what it wants. You know, you notice a sports car driving down the street and you're like, oh, wow, I love that car. I want that car. And then the, the conscious mind just like locks on to this idea that it wants the new car, the new clothes, the new experience, the ski trip, the, you know, the time on the beach, the laptop lifestyle, whatever it is that you happen to be creating or seeking. And it's this part of us, hi Robert, it's this part of us that um, it just, you know, goes on forever, seeking more and more and more. So, you know, I want you to understand something that it's okay to never be satisfied, right? You will never satisfy because you are an infinite being and you are capable of anything. So whenever someone tells you that you, um, you know, you just need to be satisfied with what you've got, please do not accept that reality because they just don't know. They just don't know. Now, that doesn't mean you're not appreciative for what you have, but being satisfied with where you're at and not moving forward is, you know, it's death, basically. If you're not moving forward, you're dying. And so, hi, Sheldon, and hi, Rick, nice to have you. Um, so the conscious mind will see something that it wants and you know, then it starts to send messages to the unconscious mind asking for that thing to come to fruition. And typically when the two minds work hand in hand, um, 
then things go really smoothly. But, um, all right, Robert, you, you have a great day and I'll chat with you soon. I'm going to upload this onto YouTube, onto my channel, so you can subscribe to that and you can watch the replay. So when the conscious mind decides it wants something and it sends that message to the unconscious mind, if the unconscious mind is in good working order, so to speak, then everything runs smoothly. The challenge is the unconscious mind is where all of our patterns are contained. And it's like a, it's like an endless bucket and it just will have all of this programming in it forever unless we actually override it. So how do you do that? Well, you know, first of all, you need to become self-aware of what it is that's in there in terms of programming that's keeping you stuck. So what kind of programming might there be in the unconscious mind? Well, basically everything that you've experienced in your entire life. And the most pivotal time frame for those experiences to be recorded are zero to seven. That's why they're called the imprint years. So between zero to seven, it's basically like our entire environment, our parents, our teachers, our church leaders, our neighbors, our school friends, you know, our coaches, our nannies, our babysitters, um, basically the news, you know, as our parents are listening to the news or our parents are fighting, it basically creates like a stamp on our psychosis and that stamp is imprinted into our unconscious mind and it becomes this template from which we filter everything through then from 7 to 14 are our modeling years so we take that imprint essentially into our relationships and into the world and we begin interacting and we're looking for feedback. Hey, Gordy Hayes, great to have you. Wow, I feel blessed. Um, so we, we're looking for that then to get, it, it gets mirrored back to us. Everything we believe about ourselves, including all the limitations and the negative emotions get mirrored back to us through our experiences. And then from 14 to 21 are basically the socialization years where we, you know, move on away from our parents out into the world and, and we're socializing everything that we were imprinted with from zero to seven and that we've been modeling through our experiences from seven to 14. And then in, in the coaching world, we have this kind of joke that after 21, it's called therapy. So, um, and there's so much truth to that. So the most important thing I wanna share with you today is how the unconscious mind gets patterned and what kinds of filters the unconscious mind actually functions from. Because what this will do is it'll demystify everything in your life about why you're not getting what you want when it should really be easy, right? So, hi Steve and Gunther, nice to see you. Um, okay, so the filters. So the filters are our beliefs, right? There's, that's a filter. So if you could imagine you have, um, I like to use metaphors. So if you could imagine that you have like an old school coffee machine, right? And um, in the little basket where you put the coffee grounds is all of the contents of your unconscious mind, all your programs, all your conditioning, all everything you've been imprinted with between zero and seven. That's like what's in, that's like the coffee grounds in the coffee pot. And then the idea that your conscious mind has like, okay, I want that new Ferrari or I want to um, buy that new house or I want to go on this trip or experience this lifestyle. That's the conscious mind. So that represents 
the water, the clear, clean water that gets poured into the coffee machine. And the problem we have, if you've got limiting beliefs or past negative emotions like fear, anger, sadness, resentment, grief, um, I'm not good enough, life is hard, it's a limited supply, the government is ruining my life, um, the market sucks, like whatever story line you're running through your mind because that's the way you've programmed yourself. So that water, that idea, that Ferrari, that house, that you know, spouse, that person, that experience, that life gets poured through the, the, the coffee grounds, right? And then it mixes and it mingles with all of those limitations. And that's why we don't get what we want because those filters sabotage the very thing we're asking for. And if you're not self-aware enough to recognize that, then you buy into some erroneous concept that there's some kind of force outside of you that is keeping you from being, doing, and having whatever it is you want to be, do, and have. And that's basically the long and the short of it without getting into a whole lot of neuroscience detail. Um, so essentially what happens then is the coffee is a mixture of everything we desire and are inspired by and all of these old programs that block us from being, doing, and having. And so, who? Um, the first thing is to realize that you have the capacity to reprogram those filters rather than just submit to a life of struggle, hardship, lack, limitation, fear, doubt, whatever, whatever, right? Rather than submit to that and accept that, which the ego would, would, would totally love you to accept because then the ego maintains control. And control by the ego is the number one block that keeps most people from achieving even close to their capacity in this lifetime. And so with that said, you actually become your own worst enemy. Hence my point at the beginning of this show that there's really no assertion. So there's nothing outside of you asserting upon you what you cannot be, do, or have. And, you know, so for those of you, and I know Gordy Hayes can relate to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this metaphor for you. Um, for any of you that work out, you know that if you want a certain sculpting to your body, that it takes repetition and it takes intention. So when you hit the gym, you're in there with an intention to create a particular outcome in your body and you do it with enough consistency and you add force, meaning more weight, to be able to get the muscle to respond and, and turn into the picture that you have in your mind. So um, the, the force is like the friction. You know, there's a saying that a kite only flies as high as the resistance that the wind provides. So um, what we do as human beings is we create this resistance through these desires that we would like to have because what happens is the desire for x the the life the experience the home the car the money the whatever 
um, actually is what drives us to let go of all of those erroneous filters and programs that are sitting in our unconscious mind that really don't serve us at all. And it's what stands in our way and most people aren't even aware of it. Not even aware of it. You have to see it for what it is. Um, hi, Meldon and Fred. Nice to have you. I just need to take a breath because I get so like excited about this. Um, gosh, what can I say? It's a, it really just comes down to making a decision and with yourself. And the decision is that you are going to allow yourself to be your greatness. And no matter what limiting belief and or negative emotion is in that unconscious programming that you are letting it go. Hi, Gina. Nice to see you. By the way, Gina is an amazing, amazing hairstylist. Love that girl. She does my locks. Um, you know, it really just comes down to that. You have to decide to decide. And then be self-aware enough through meditation. If you go to my YouTube channel and you subscribe, you can get all of this material free, first of all. Secondly, there's a meditation on there. There's an energy pull that you can start to pull stuff toward you, which I'm going to do a whole episode on pushing and pulling. I did a little bit on the bending reality part too, and I'll go into it in more depth. So in another episode. So, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to decide to decide. You just have to have a conversation with yourself and say enough, like enough of playing small, enough of living a limited existence, enough of making yourself unhappy, unwell, low energy, um, just enough. Like it all comes down to the relationship you have with yourself and forgiving the people that raised you because they did the best they could with the resources that they had. And typically, um, you know, our broken parents raise children from a place that they understand life to be. You know, what is your model of the world? How small is your model of the world? And how big would you like your model of the world to be? It's our points of view that keep our model of the world like really small. So look, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years and I'm a master trainer in human development. And I, I feel like I've just begun on this whole understanding of neuroscience because it goes so much deeper than what uh, is even available. You know, and new information is always coming through. I get downloads every day. I get, I get deeper and, and more advanced awarenesses every day. And I like to share them with you guys if it makes your life easier and you can have a more enjoyable existence on this planet, in this body, in this lifetime, for however long you've decided to be here. But I do want to share this with you. And that is, when I first began working in this field, um, one of the things I subscribed to, when I, I, used, I did thousands of hours of personal breakthrough sessions with people, and so people would come to me and basically say, you know, I don't like my life. I don't like, I don't like this. I don't like that. Like they'd have their laundry list of what they didn't like. And so then I would design a breakthrough process for them. 
and I'd work with them for, you know, the average breakthrough session was about 28 hours. Some were as little as 24, some were as long as 36. And we do it over a series of two, three days. And it was like a flipping marathon, you know? And it was just like repatterning, 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 and undoing synapses in the mind, and then creating new neurotransmitters with people. And it was just this constant, it was exhausting and it was liberating all at the same time. Because as I was working with them, I was seeing me and what I needed to shift. And I was releasing my own synapses and I was building my own neurotransmitters. And it was just this incredible experience for me on a very personal and organic level. And the thing that I've learned around that is um, that technology is really powerful, yet it can be put to greater use. Because the thing is, is that we are, we are not an onion. Let me just say that again. We are not an onion. So the allopathic psychology model that tells you that we are like an onion with layers to peel off and eventually we're going to get down to like this core of self-love does not know what they're talking about. And it's based in Newtonian physics, uh, which came, you know, which, which is part and parcel with Freud's thinking, which is a whole other conversation. Um, but essentially suffice it to say that we are not an onion. Okay. Hi, Jose. Hi, Rob. Hi, Nader. Nice to have you guys join me. You came in at the perfect moment. Um, Essentially, what we are is we are a nucleated sphere. If you haven't heard that term before, it's um, what it essentially means is when we go seeking for a problem to fix, then actually what ends up happening is the problem propagates itself energetically and it becomes bigger and, and more elongated. And it just goes on and goes on and goes on and goes on. And I can attest to that because when I was doing these personal breakthrough sessions with people, sometimes I'd go down seven, eight, 12, 14, 20 layers in their, in their neurology before I could even find a positive emotion or, or, a, or a expansive belief. And I was re rewiring, rewiring, rewiring to the point where I'm like, this is ridiculous. What, where am I going to get to this nucleus of self-love that the allopathic medical model says exists? Because it doesn't. We are a nucleated sphere. There is no end to what we are searching for. So if you are searching for the problem within you, if you are searching for what's wrong with your life, if you are searching for what doesn't work, then you will find the more problems, you will find more wrongness with your life, and you will find what doesn't work over and over and over and over again. And I believe that the survivor mentality needs to come, you need to cut it off at the knees. You are so much greater than being a survivor. It's really time to step into being a thriver. And the thriver mentality comes from self-awareness. So when you start pouring that idea, which is the water into the coffee machine, and it comes into contact with the coffee grounds, which represent your psychosis, your unconscious patterning, that rather than get caught up in that, it just goes right through and comes out pure. It comes out manifesting, or, or shall I say actualizing, it comes out actualizing as in the very thing that you asked for, right? The car, the house, the people in your life, the relationships, the success, the money. And so this is really the key 
it's like, you know, when I'm working with a company and I'm transforming a leadership team and I'm scaling their business, what I'm doing is the smallest change for the greatest result. Because most people are freaked out by change. They think that if something changes, they're going to lose control, which is the ego. And um, highway knee, um, they're going to lose control. And if they lose control, their life will fall apart. So the ego holds on like crazy and doesn't want to let go of that control. So if we do these little changes that create these wonderful, positive, big results, we essentially build up rapport between the conscious mind, which is where the desires are for the growth and the new thing and the next and the next and the next and the next, and the unconscious, which is saying, yeah, but I was taught this is pain. I was taught I can't have everything I want, that I shouldn't be too big for my britches, that I should apologize for my greatness. And so, you know, rather than have those in conflict, which is what we call split energy, we want to actually bring those into alignment so that the, the end goal can actualize itself. And this is where the super conscious comes into play. So just in terms of um, keeping you, I'm going to run this for about four more minutes and then we're going to, I'm hungry. <laughs> so then we're going to go for lunch. And um, so the super conscious is where you start tapping into source, source energy, spirit, God, the God force, your infinite capacity, whatever you want to call it. When you start tapping in, then you can actually override those programs. And yes, you can have instantaneous healing. You can be living miracles every moment, every day. You can be having like this genie that they talked about in The Secret, but with a caveat. And that is that you are guided to take action. Action must be a part of this equation. You can't just hide in your house. Well, maybe at some point you'll be able to, so I don't want to put any limitations on this. But for now, just temporarily, it's not about hiding in your house and not talking to people and not networking and not creating and not meeting and not doing joint ventures. It's about listening to that inner guidance. Who should I call? What should I say? What's the alignment? And having those people find you. You know, it's when you're doing the energy pulls, you're pulling it toward you. And this is the thing about the super conscious. It's not going to intervene unless you invite it in. So I talk out loud, literally all day long to my super conscious. And I'll ask it. You know, show me, like guide me. Who, should, who am I supposed to call? Where's this conversation supposed to go? Um, and when I'm on a call onboarding a new client, I'm listening for how to connect with them, what to say, what to do energetically, how to run my energy. It is literally an art and a science. So that's kind of my thumbnail sketch on the unconscious, the conscious, and the super conscious. And I will load this video onto my YouTube channel, which is under Neuroengineering Institute on YouTube. And you can go over there and you can enjoy the recording as many times as you like. And if you have any questions, you can PM me and I'll do my best to get back to you. Now, remember my next shift, change, and heal your money story class is coming up later on this month. So if you're having any challenges with receiving money, if you're having any challenges with your finances, 
or if you would just like to get into the the realm of creating and receiving more revenue streams i'm all about multiple revenue streams then this is definitely the class for you and i teach it online it's nine weeks so it's nine modules we meet once a week i teach it live and you know depending on what level you come in i'll give you the recordings so it's like the gift that keeps on giving because every time you want to increase your income you can go back and review the material and you can level up because we are infinite it's not a one-time thing that you level up you're going to level up to the day you kick the bucket out of this body and then whoosh, wow that's a level up that deserves another dialogue at another time and then of course my business accelerator boot camp is february 22nd 23rd and then i'm off to europe so I just booked this amazing speaking gig in London and I've got a couple more percolating in Europe that are consecutive. So I'm going to be jumping around. I love that part of my life. I'm going to be laptop lifestyle, jumping around to different countries, different, different cultures and um, visiting the Dutch, by the way. <laughs> and the French and the British so far. So for those of you that are abroad, I'd be delighted to meet with you in your office with your team and do a discovery session, do a strategy session um, and be delighted to speak at any conferences and events that you have coming up in the month of March. So thank you so much for joining me today. You guys rock. Have an incredible day. Be blessed, take ownership of your greatness, and start to practice some of these tools and watch your life completely turn around. Love you. Thank you. Friday, 1230. See you then. Bye.